Hello and welcome to the VBA Jetpack course by Trump Excel. I'm Sumit Bansal and in this video I'll show you a practical example of how to show or hide objects using VBA in Excel. So let's get started. A few weeks ago I created this dashboard on EPL, English Premier League. So this is a football statistics dashboard where uh, you have the scroll bar. You can change the week number by clicking on the scroll bar and as soon as you change the week number all the stats go away and to bring them back you have to click on the match. So when you change the week number you can see that these matches would change whichever match took place in that week. Then you can simply double click on this on these cells and then these would bring up the stats along with uh, the logo of those team clubs and the red cards and yellow cards and the match statistics. Uh, but in this video I want to cover how we used the help menu. So here if uh, a user is looking at this dashboard and he doesn't know what to do then he can click on this help menu. If I click on this you can see I get these two boxes. This says use slider to change week number and this says double click on the row to get match stats and when I click on it again it goes away. So this is a very nice way of putting a help menu where if you have say three or four steps then you can even number these steps. Maybe you can have number one do this enter your name, number two enter your date of birth, number three enter your details or your address. So these could be one thing where you can show help and then it could be a toggle button. So if you click on it again it goes away. So let's see how we did this. The first thing that you need to do is you need to insert a shape. So let me uh, show you how to do this uh, by taking some random shape here, inserting some random shape here and let's say I would call this test. And uh, the next thing that I want to do is I need to name this text box. So I would go to the name manager here and as of now it says a rounded rectangle 35 which is the default name that it uses. I would call this uh, let's say test, test VBA and now uh, let's see how this works. I would go back to the VB editor. I already have the code for these two text boxes. Let me add the third one and we will also go through the code. So let me press Alt F11. It opens the VB editor here and here I have the sub in this module. I have this sub show help and the first line is on error resume next. It's just for precaution but uh, it's nothing. Uh, I don't expect any error to occur. And then here are two if statements. The first one is if active sheet dot shapes is help scroll bar. And here if I come back and I open this, you can see this text box has been named help scroll bar. And this one has been named help double click. So if I go back to the VB editor, it says if active sheet dot shapes and within this we have the name dot visible, which is the property is equal to MSO true, which means that if this is visible, then change this property to MSO false else make it MSO true because this is a toggle button. So if I click on it and it is visible then it would become false, it would be hidden but if it is hidden then it would make it visible. And similarly I just replicated it for this uh, text box as well. Let's do this for the third one that we have created. So I come here, I copy paste this and here I would simply change this with test VBA and let me copy paste it at other places as well, it's test VBA test VBA and that's it. Now if I go back and I click on it you can see all these three text boxes go away and if I click on it again all these three come become visible again. So this is a cool technique that I usually use in dashboards. You can use it if you have a say a huge form or if you have a, say a, a place where you want a user to enter some details in a specific format or if you want to guide the user in the process uh, let's say number one, number two, number three, number of steps then you can use these techniques and you can see it's so simple you can add more boxes to it. All you need to do is change the code in the backend. So that's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Thank you and have a nice day.